Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel of My Life in Our World. I hope you guys are all having a really great day, great week, great month. I know that things are still really hard for a lot of people around the world and in the United States um, due to COVID-19. And this is really one of the reasons I wanted to make this video because I know that there are a lot of students that are dealing with this same predicament of having to decide between virtual school and in-person classes. And this is not only for college students like myself, but it's for you know elementary kids, middle school kids, high school kids, and sometimes the parents or the students are having to decide what's gonna be best for them and their situation. Today's video is gonna be covering my advice and my process on deciding which was gonna be best for me. And for those of you who don't know, if you haven't watched my last video, I have decided that I'm not going to be doing in-person classes for this fall semester, which is from September-ish time to December, because I just didn't think it was the best decision for me and my family and my boyfriend um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. A lot of the things I'm going to be talking about might be a little bit more geared towards college situations but I do want you guys to know that you guys can easily apply this to a lot of your own situations if you're not in college and you're just trying to decide if you want to do virtual or not. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get into the video. So the first very cliche thing that I have for you guys is that you really need to write down your pros and cons. And this seems very simple, but honestly, I think if you're thinking about it in your head, it makes a lot more sense when you see it on paper and you're really able to see like, okay, is all of this worth it? What's gonna be best for me? And so I'll just go through my process for my pros and cons in my situation. So right now I'm living with my boyfriend and his family and that was something that really does affect my situation um, because this isn't a decision that can just be made by me. It has to be agreed upon by everyone that I'm interacting with because I'm not only putting myself at risk, but everyone else. Um, and also another thing to keep in mind is that I do live in Florida, for those of you who don't know, and if you are in Florida or you're in any states um, in the United States or around the world that are still being heavily affected by COVID-19, you understand that this is not a very easy, lighthearted decision to make because, at least for me, when I... 100% decided that I was doing virtual classes for the fall semester, I was like, okay, like, this is real, this is legit, I am committing that I'm going to have to be dealing with this, you know, COVID situation until December. And that's the end of the year, like, that is all of 2020. And it is really crazy to wrap your head around the fact that this entire year has been dedicated to navigating this whole issue and this problem around the world and to still be dealing with it and committing yourself to protecting your health and safety against this for multiple months is really hard and it's a little bit scary and sad but you have to find the positive in everything and I think that I'm still going to be able to get the same quality education as I would doing in-person classes. So I'm going to move away from that little rant but my pros and cons were very affected, like I said, by my living situation. So the pros of doing in-person classes, and I can see this for a lot of other people, you know, most of the time you are being able to see your friends, you're able to live on campus, away from your parents, which I know a lot of kids are probably getting sick of their parents at this point. Um, you're able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with your professors and your classmates. You won't have to figure out, you know, all these different ways to do group work if you were separated. Um, I think things are just a lot more convenient. And that is the whole reason that kids live on campus in college is because it's so convenient to learn and live in the same location. Then for the cons of not doing in person, I mean, the cons is definitely the risk that is associated with going in person. I mean, and you guys, this is going to be different for everyone, um, especially on your perspective on the whole COVID-19 situation. But for me, I'm taking this very seriously. I know that people have lost their lives, lost loved ones over the situation, and it is not something to be taken lightly. And because of that, I really had this question in my head, 
is it worth it? Is it worth my health? Is it worth putting someone that I love at risk to go in person and take my classes when I could do it from home? So that might not be uh, as in important question for some people, but for me, living in Florida, living in Orlando, where things are getting worse by the day um, regarding COVID-19, um, that was something that really influenced my decision. The other thing was definitely the commute. Uh, going into campus, you have to drive there or walk there or bike there, and I used to live 15 minutes from campus, so it never used to be an issue, but since I moved, I am now about 35-40 minutes sometimes away from campus, and since I'm not already going out for my internship, which is downtown, it's a little bit inconvenient, a lot of it inconvenient for me to drive out to in-person classes every day if that's the only thing that I'm doing for that day. Like that's the only reason I would be going out. So that was another thing that I was like, okay, is it worth the risk of for my health, but is it also worth the gas money and driving 40 minutes you know my time also to go out there and take my classes in person of course i know that this decision is going to be different for everyone especially kids that want to live on campus in the dorm so they can see their friends and have fun enjoy the college experience and you may feel like that's being taken away from you especially if you're a freshman or you're a senior and this is your senior year and you feel like you're not being able to enjoy it as much as you would want. But keep in mind, this is all temporary. I don't think that COVID is something that we're going to have to be dealing with for hopefully more than the next two years. I do hope that some sort of solution will be coming out in the near future that will help us not have to deal with this. But if you do decide to do virtual, remember it's only for the fall semester and when January rolls around, your school will be offering different options. They may not even offer virtual school anymore or they might not even offer um, in-person classes depending on if things get worse or better. So just keep that in mind and that's something that for me, I'm like, okay, I'm only committing to virtual school until December. And then in January, I'll reevaluate and see if I wanna change my decision. So just keep that in mind. So the second thing that I did besides writing a pros and cons list was I really communicated and had conversations with my family, with my boyfriend, with my friends, anyone that I interact with on a daily or weekly basis um, in the quarantine, specifically where I live in Florida. And having those conversations really helped me realize that other people want to be involved in my decision and I did feel a lot of support from my family and doing virtual classes and with things not getting better in the situation in Florida right now and us seeing increases in cases every single day. It just didn't sound like the right decision, decision to just ignore the facts and go in and do in-person classes. So that's really something that I encourage you guys to do, especially if you are living in an apartment with a bunch of college friends, or if you are living with your family, or if you're living with grandparents, please include them in these conversations because if there are people in your family that are at risk, um, like higher risk because of their age or other health issues, they can easily be affected by your decision going and doing classes and you coming and seeing them on a daily or weekly basis. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you have those smart conversations. So the third thing that I encourage you guys to look into because it can really help you save some money if you are paying tuition in college is to find out if your school is offering grants for people that choose to do virtual or online school. I know specifically for Rollins undergrad, if you decide to do virtual online classes all through the fall semester, which means that all of your classes, not just Mondays and Tuesdays or Thursdays and Friday classes are online, it's all of your classes. And if you decide to do that, you actually get a $2,500 grant um, that is to account for loss of experience um, for that semester. So I was really sad when I found out that that grant was not being offered for graduate students like myself, and they have their own reasons for that. But really look into your specific university or private school or college and see are they going to be offering any sort of um, money for loss of experience if you choose to do the virtual route? Obviously, some public schools might not even 
think that's an option and they might not offer anything at all, especially if you are not paying a really high ticket price for tuition. But I'm very thankful that Rollins undergrad has offered that because I do think that there is something to be said for not coming into campus every day and still having to pay the same price. So even though it not a, it's not a lot compared to how much the tuition is, it's still something. So if that is going to affect your decision, please look into it because if you are wanting to save some cash this semester and that seems like a good decision, then that is just another plus for you. All right, so that is all that I have for you guys. I hope this helps in some big or small way um, in helping you guys just try to navigate this whole situation on trying to decide what schooling option is gonna be best for you. You know, you really need to take into account your family, those you interact with, the pros and cons, how you learn, you know, if you are a visual learner or you are someone that needs you know, more hands-on help, you know, or you're just not someone that can learn through a screen. These are all things that are going to affect you um, and your learning experience. So just make sure that you are being thorough in your investigation of what is best for yourself. And also keep in mind that not all of this is permanent. I really have hopes that this is not something that we're going to have to deal with going into this next year but if it is at least we'll be prepared and we have all of each other to lean on so if you guys have any questions or concerns regarding anything with college or if you guys just want to talk i am more than welcome to have a conversation with you and just leave something down in the comments below or you can dm me on my instagram which is at Tatiana Fagan, uh, very simple, uh, but make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like any of these videos, and yeah, I just hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, being healthy. Make sure to wear your face mask if you're going out in public, and stay six feet apart, but love you guys, and I'll see you next time.